Hello, Adventures in Spacecraft. Uh, this is going to be part two of a two-part episode in which I make uh, high temperature molds for minis. I may do another uh, episode like this because I've got a lot more molds to make, but I wanted to walk through the process a little bit of how I build uh, the second half of these molds just to kind of share that part of the process as well. So last time we built a box glued it down to this surface that's relatively non-stick, uh, filled the bottom half with clay, embedded the minis or the accessories for the minis in the clay, uh, and then poured in our silicone after building all of our vents and things like that. This time we're going to remove uh, all of this from the, from the surface itself. We are going to flip it over uh, and remove all of the bits uh, or all of the clay from here, re-embed any of the, the pieces of uh, the minis or the wire that we used for creating our different vents um, and re-embed them back into the silicone. Last time we forgot to add registers or little indentations in here uh, that'll help lock the two halves together. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, add some uh, as we go and then we will mix some more silicone and pour it right in. So let's get started. First, I'm just gonna do a quick test. And yep, yeah, that's what I thought. It is glued down too hard to be able to remove by hand. So I'm gonna grab a hobby knife. Uh, this is basically an X-Acto knife with kind of a chisel blade on it. Um, and I'm just gonna use that to help separate and cut away the hot glue, which I realized I forgot to grab the hot glue gun. So I may have to step away here momentarily to grab because we're going to need to reattach our box once we get it put down. Just kind of slide that under there and pry it up. Also apologize for my pasty white skin but it is the hottest day of the year so far even though it's the middle of May here in Seattle and us rain weather folks are not accustomed to temperatures above 80 so we get in full on summer mode all right let's get this cut away it's almost there we've got two more oh, we can already feel it starting to give good now I'm trying to be fairly careful and not destroy the box, but it's not the end of the world if it gets a little bit damaged because we're actually going to glue down this face the next go round. And if I was a smarter man, I would have used uh, some tape on the edges for the first half so that it would be easier to disassemble and less likely to damage the edges where we're most likely to get some uh, leak leakage and stuff. All right, this is coming up. I can feel it starting to move. There we go. Nice. And just like that, we're good to go. So you can see how some of it spilled over and you can see how tough the silicone is now. Um, it's actually very stretchy, very flexible, um, but still very tough. Like it's, it's difficult, if not impossible, to just tear by hand. Uh, this material is great. It allows you to flex it to remove uh, models from the silicone, but uh, still provides uh, plenty of detail um, and won't break easily when you're uh, trying to remove stuff from it. All right, so I'm going to take this knife now and cut away the glue between these edges. And if you remember in the last episode, we also forgot to add our mold release agent, which would have helped us remove this silicone and prevent the silicone from bonding to the walls of the foam core. Hopefully it's not going to be too big of an issue, but we're about to find out. Oh yeah, no problem. Good, 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 good. 
it's one of the nice things about silicone is that it pretty much only sticks to silicone. Uh, this is where we had some tear away uh, of the paper on here. It's a bit more porous and it's stuck to it a little bit, but no problem. Nothing we can't deal with. Nothing that's going to hurt the quality of our molds. All right, so there's the foam core box removed. Now we're going to actually remove the clay from the silicone. And hopefully a lot of the pieces will be already embedded in the silicone, but it does look like, yeah, we can already see some of the wire pieces at least are going with the clay. So they're gonna need to be reseeded a little bit, which is what I kind of expected. All right, so it looks like, yeah. So it looks like the sword was the only piece that lifted with the clay, but almost all of my wire vents went with the clay. So we're gonna have to reseat those. I'm gonna leave them there because they're in a nice position to be able to transfer back over cleanly. Um, and while I'm here, I'm gonna take my hobby knife and clean up a little bit of this excess silicone here that got underneath the sprues to give me just better adhesion or better uh, flow channels for the future piece I, for the second half that I'm about to cut. Overall though I'm seeing some very nice impressions. The detail on the sword looks very clean um, I've got a little bit of overflow right there, but that actually might work to our favor and help hold the piece down. Yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, so one of the things I'd mentioned is we're going to cut new registers into this mold. Um, we want to do that away from any of the channels and, and things like that, but essentially all I'm going to do is cut some grooves into this that aren't connected to these main channels. Um, that the second half of the silicone will go in and fill. And those will create keys, essentially, that will help hold the two halves of the mold together in ways so that they don't uh, slip when I'm joining them again. Um, first, going to start here. I'm just going to start right on the edge and just cut kind of an angle. Don't need to be any real precision shapes or anything like that. They're just intended to make it a less of a perfectly smooth surface. Wow, you can see a lot of the bubbles that were still mixed in. I don't think you can probably see them on camera, but we've got lots of tiny little bubbles in the silicone. If I had a pressure pot, I could have forced these to collapse down to basically microscopic size. Uh, if I had a vacuum chamber, I could have actually used that to pull the silicone or pull all of the air out of the silicone. All right, I'm going to cut a few more here. Um, let's do one right here. That's a nice one there. Oh, it sounds like we've got some guests over at the house, so I may actually have to jump off for a minute and rejoin you guys here in a sec. Uh, all right, I'm go now on this one, since I've got so much more room, I'm going to cut some sort of zigzags. Those lines just absolutely disappear. This stuff basically self-heals. But I'm just trying to cut some holes, essentially, in this guy. Um, just shallow grooves that will help the two halves of the mold kind of lock together and not slip apart when I'm uh, putting them back together to make casts. That's a good one. I'll kind of do another one here. One more right here. All right, so I'm gonna go grab the hot glue gun. I will be back in just mere seconds. I'll try to clean this off. I can chuck this in the trash as I go. Be right back.
right, so I've got the hot glue gun. Actually, I'm gonna clean up a little bit of the edges on here just to make this a little bit easier on myself in the future. And then cut up away some of this extra flashing on here so that this thing's gonna sit a little bit more flat. Looking at this, this piece is a little bit shallower than I would have liked, but should still work fine for our, our needs here. All right, that looks good. Cool, and that sits nice and flat on the, on the board here. I'm gonna plug in this hot glue gun. Um, make sure I've got an extra stick if I need it. Probably won't. <clears throat> now one of the things to keep in mind uh, when you are building a two part or the second half of your mold is uh, when I said earlier silicone doesn't like to stick to anything except silicone. Um, you want to be careful about that and use a release agent to allow you to uh, separate the two halves. Um, if you don't put something down, it will uh, essentially you'll end up with a brick of silicone and you'll have to very carefully cut down the middle to, to get them separated. With something like this, that would be pretty much impossible and ruin your mold and you'd have to start all over. So I'm going to be applying today. Um, I have a tube of uh, petroleum jelly. Um, it works perfect for this sort of, of purpose. There's any number of other mold release agents that uh, you could use as well, but this is just a household petroleum jelly. Works great for it. All right, um, I'm actually gonna, while I'm waiting for that hot glue gun to heat, I'm gonna make sure I'm cleaning away any of the extra clay, because we don't need it there, and it's just gonna leave voids. Um, and I'm noticing that the goblet here, the little drips of blood are a little bit covered up by some of the silicone, so I'm going to cut a little bit of it away and allow that to be filled in the second half. Just to make sure that we get a good bond and get a good impression from it. Um, and once I have both of these halves of the mold finalized, um, I'll go back in with a with a hobby knife like this and do some additional cleanup um, and make sure that all the vents and channels are cut appropriately and a lot of times at the terminals where they meet the model uh, you won't get great flow unless you kind of widen them out but that's a lot easier to do after you've taken the the actual master that you're making copies of out all right this guy does not want to come out doing some kind of precision work here trying to just do some cleanup without changing the overall shape of the mold and it's easier said than done because this stuff is very flexible and very strong and does kind of self-heal when you cut it so all right let's do a little bit more here you can also see that a little bit of the chain on this flail of slime enstras uh, was completely covered up, so I'm going to cut away any of it that's covering the chain just to make sure that we get it not fully locked in because that's going to end up damaging the mold once I try to remove it or remove the masterpiece out of the mold. There we go, that's cleaned up. Looks like I got a little bit of clay trapped in there. That's cleaned up as well. And then there's a little bit of clay stuck to the top here. I'm not too worried about that because that's actually where I'm gonna be cutting our, my pouring, my hole that I'm gonna be pouring the uh, 
material in when I'm actually making casts from this mold. Um, I'm just cleaning up the walls here that we're going to be pouring. Um, so as I mentioned, this uh, this half of the mold ended up a little bit shallower than I had wanted. So this time, rather than the 130 or so grams of part A, uh, we'll mix up a little bit more. We'll go maybe 166. Um, I just like to keep it in uh, multiples of 33 since we're working at a 100 to 3 ratio of the, uh, of the silicone. Um, now where did I put this guy? I'm going to use that to clean off last of the hot glue on the board. It should just come right up. Yep. Yeah, I really like this, this material. I forget what it's called. It's not Formica, but it's a... Uh, you can get it at any big box uh, hardware store. They usually have uh, big sheets of it. You can get small bits cut down. I use it for a lot of sculpting and stuff like that. Um, and a lot of times, if you ask, they'll have offcuts of it that you can get for just dirt cheap. All right. So while that hot glue heats up, let me clean this off, chuck this in the trash. Um, if you missed the first half of this, uh, I've got the whole video uh, uploaded to my YouTube channel, which I think should be li linked on my Twitch channel now. Um, it should be just uh, youtube.com slash rank and file, I believe. Um, all right, so I'm going to start transferring some of these wires over. Um, and basically, the further over on this side they are, the further over they are here. So this piece is going to go here, because remember it's flipped over. Uh, this one goes just like so. These tweezers definitely help me move these and place them with some precision. They just need to get kind of seated down as best as possible. Not all of them are going to sit and stay perfectly, but they'll give us a decent impression there. And again, these are just intended to serve as our channels for material and we'll go through and clean those up uh, with a hobby knife once the two molds are completed. Uh, here's this piece. Nice big shape, easy to identify, and that one seats nicely. The larger ones do tend to. Alright, let's go with this guy next. Alright. Dropping this in. Let's do the sword next. Come on. Come on out of there. There it goes. Ooh! That's what I was afraid of. It just bent a bit. So I'm going to place this back down here. Just apply gentle pressure. Try to flatten it out as best I can. Remove any of the clay because any of it's going to hide critical detail. It was placed in like this, so it gets flipped over and placed back into the mold, like so. It's got a little bit of flash overhang there. Um, oh, no, that's actually going to work out in my favor and help hold this thing in place, I hope. Nice. Nice. That looks good. Much better than my first attempt. Cool. Okay, so now let's work over some of the smaller wire that we were using for flows or for channels. Get that guy seated. Get another guy here. And that one connected to the sprue. using for my primary channel. Nice long piece that went from the sprue to the tip of the mace. I just want to get all this stuff in and then we'll add the release agent before we start uh, mixing our silicone.
These guys do not want to stay seated. They were probably a little bit too deep in the clay, which means there's not a particularly deep channel on this half for them to seat in. I think this guy's just upside down too. So they tend to roll around. You gotta be kind of gentle with them. Get them in place. And again, we can clean this stuff up a little bit with a hobby knife, but the more careful we can be in this half, uh, the less work it leaves us later. I'm gonna pull this guy out, and that should do it for this half. And we've got some more of the wire for on the other side of the sword. Good. Good. All right. Pulling out this one. That one locked into place very nicely. Very happy with that. It looks like it's making good contact with both the ring of fire and the tip of the sword, so that should make cleanup a breeze. Get this guy in. I got a feeling it's going to be a little more difficult. These small ones always are. There's just not a whole lot of channel for it to lock into. Come on. Get in there. Come on. That'll do it. That's more like it. Alright, so I'm going to start with this great big one here. Oh, and remember it gets flipped over. Nice. That fits well. And this guy goes in like so to the tip of this flame. And that should help prevent any air from being trapped in there once we start pouring in our material in the final mold. One big corner piece here. Got this guy here that was just sort of uh, acting as a sort of buffer between. It's so small though, I don't know how well that's going to fit, and we may just end up having to cut this one manually afterward. But we'll give it a shot. Let's see if we can get it to set. Yeah, I don't think that's likely to stay particularly well, but we'll, we'll see. Alright, um, this is one of the interior pieces. This would have been this one, the vertical that goes from one of the drops of blood of the goblet. It seems to set fairly well. Second piece here goes from the ring of blood to the, the ring of fire to the goblet, and we just lost one of our wires because I bumped it. I'll put that one in last since that's kind of where my hand is resting. I apologize if my hand is blocking much of the view, but it's kind of the nature of the beast, unfortunately. There we go. All right, we got two more pieces of wire to transfer. And by the time we finish with this, hot glue should be ready to roll. And there goes this one. Place it in nice and firmly. Hopefully it locks in place. Good. Same with this one. I'll flip it over. Like so. Oh, I think I see what I did there. Flip it back over like that. Much better. That fits. I flipped it vertically instead of horizontally. It's mirrored, not vertical. Okay, then the last one, the one that I had knocked out with my finger earlier. If I can get this to kind of lock into place, maybe. Yeah, not really. Come on. Too good for your home. Go to your home. All right, 
Well, that's going to be good enough. All right, so now test the hot glue. Oh, yeah, perfect. Cool. So we're going to take the same walls that we had for the mold before. Um, I'm going to slide this guy gently over here first. Put down some hot glue on the what was the top of my mold previously. It's a nice generous amount. Just to make sure we're not getting any leaks. Try to lay this down at a 90 degree angle. Actually I'm going to keep it tipped up a little bit slide this guy into place and then use this to make sure my bracing is matching the original hold it down until the glue cools that should do it all right and then this i'm going to put very very generous amounts of hot glue along these edges here because that's where the leaks are most likely to occur especially since they're a little bit uneven from separating the molds before. A little bit of this down here. Like so, and then I'll go back and reinforce the corners. Nice, nice and firm. Make sure it's all the way over the edges. Wow, hot glue is hot. All right, I'm gonna add a little more to these edges here just to really make sure we don't get any leaks. That's the last thing I want. Probably along here too, just to be safe. Couldn't hurt. There we go, and then one more. Right there. Good. Now this time I am going to remember to unplug the hot glue gun. There we go. And now I'm going to apply my mold release agent. Uh, again, petroleum jelly. I'm just going to use a couple of these cotton swabs here. Um, I'm going to set this clay aside. I'll go through and pick out any of the uh, impurities, the leftover silicone and stuff like that, because I can reuse that again and again and again. Um, but we want to make sure that we apply a generous portion of this stuff down, but we don't want to allow it to really pool up, because that's going to remove any detail that we get. But it's real important that we cover as much of this as we can with a very thin layer, because that's going to prevent these two sides of the mold from sticking to each other and giving us a brick and essentially ruining our mold and making us start all over again. So, just a nice generous brushing of this stuff. I'm going to try to make sure I'm also getting the model itself, but try not to dislodge any of the wires put an extra big goop right there that I can sort of use as a palette. So this is also why you, anytime you get new minis or models or model kit, you generally want to, ah shoot, uh, give it a, a bath with a uh, little soap and water. Shoot, I just lost a piece of wire, and I don't know where it went. Well, rats, that's not good. All on the ground? Well, okay, I guess that one, well, it's not a super critical piece of the mold, so I guess I'm just going to have to do without, and I'll have to cut that channel out manually. Again, these little tiny bits do not like to stay in place. Um, but yeah, you want to make sure that you wash any of your minis or your models before you put down your primer coat, uh, because they generally have a very thin layer of a mold release agent 
that is designed to prevent anything from bonding to it, including your paint. So that is why you want to clean your minis before you prime them, so that when you do go to paint them, your paint will stay where you put it, and not end up flaking off when you play with them. Oh, these little tiny pieces are going to be a pain in the butt, aren't they? Oh, okay, I'll reseat that one here in a second. So I do have a, a can of aerosolized mold release agent that I haven't had great results with uh, preventing the two halves of the mold from sticking, but it does a nice job if you spray your finished molds to make it, oh, doggone it. Okay, that one's still there at least. Set that one here. Um, and that one there. Um, it does allow you to. Uh, it makes it easier to remove the cast pieces out of the mold because um, sometimes they do like to stick, especially if there's a lot of detail on them. It, it will tend to sort of bond a little bit to the. to the mold and make it harder to remove. So, especially if you're using a more brittle material. Ooh, I think that's the piece I was looking for. Um, if you're using a more brittle material like resins, um, the way that they flex when you try to pull them out of the mold, uh, especially if they haven't had time to fully cure, which sometimes can take a few days, um, they can be pretty brittle and break apart as you try to remove them, which can be real disappointing. Because these molds are not going to last forever. You can't get infinite copies from them. I probably should have seeded that wire before or after I did this part. Well, lessons for the future. That should probably do it. Looks like everything's nice and shiny. Oh, I want to make sure to get all the way along the top here too. Even though I'll be cutting away a lot of that, it's going to make separating these two halves once I get it poured much easier. Make my life a little bit easier. Life's hard enough as it is, right? All right, so now let's go through and reseat any of these things that got moved around in the process. Like this piece of wire. I'm actually going to grab a second pair of tweezers. Always handy to have these around. Because bare fingers are not going to be the give me the precision I need to set these back in place. Not that I am necessarily getting the sort of precision from these tweezers either, because these things are just being a pain in the ass. Alright, patience, patience, patience. Do it right the first time. Save yourself work in the future. Much better. Okay, there's that. I'm going to try to reseat this little tiny guy. which means I just got to put this guy back and then there's a couple of those other ones that are just kind of knocked slightly out of position come on come on man that's such a shallow groove for this guy it does not want to stay this top corner curved one. I've got a feeling I'm going to have to do a lot of repair to that after the fact. Which I am okay 
okay with, but I'd prefer not to have to do. Ugh, this thing's so greasy, it just sticks to the tweezers. Stay put, please. Do I have this backwards, maybe? I do. That might have something to do with it. Didn't have it in the right orientation. This is not a very good song. I apologize, because I can't sing, and the lyrics are crap. There we go. That actually made a world of difference. That's actually popping right into position. Let that be a lesson to you. Don't fight something if you're doing it wrong in the first place. Take a step back and look at what the heck you're doing. Do it correctly. What a concept. All right. Uh, okay, I need going around doing a quick inventory. This one's slightly out of place. Just doing a quick assessment. Two. All right, there we go. So now, all the rest of these look good. Great. I am going to put the cap back on this. We're going to mix up one more batch of silicone, pour it right in, let it set for 24 hours. That is that. Uh, yeah. So I've got my scale here, just an ordinary kitchen scale. Uh, I've got my gloves and a cup to mix it in. And let's get my gloves on. Make sure we tear. Reset the scale to zero so we get an accurate measurement. And again, we're going to be looking to mix a little bit more than we did last time. Last time we did 130 grams. I'm going to go ahead and up that to, you know what, let's go up to 200 grams, uh, which means we'll need six grams of the part B. I'm going to grab mixing stick here to help it come out. I'm going to need more of this silicone before too long. Um, I put a link to where to order this silicone uh, as well as the clay up on my YouTube channel uh, on the video there. Okay, we're looking for 200 grams. Whoa, let's slow that down a little. So that's 96. We're about double that. That's 160, so another good scoop or so. Should get us 180. Another decent sized glob. 92, 93. Let's get a tiny bit more. That ought to do it. We're at 197, plus a little bit left on the stick. Plus the stick itself puts us at 200. It's close enough. Okay, so now I'm going to tear one more time. And we're looking for six grams of this stuff. Part B. That's four. Five. Six. Beauty. That's that. So now we gotta stir this stuff real good. Alexa, set a timer for four minutes. Four minutes, starting now. All right, so we'll get this all stirred up. Really make sure that you're scraping the walls and just doing everything you can to make sure that it's fully fully mixed because any parts that aren't fully mixed are going to come out real soft and ruin 
the mold. Usually I'd use slightly larger craft sticks for this, but these are the ones I've got on hand, so. Oops, and I just broke that one. So I'm gonna wipe it off and grab another one. This is also why I would prefer to use larger sticks. If I had them around, but I don't. Uh, there's one right here. Keep mixing and mixing and mixing. before and ruined some molds that just permanently stay goopy and sticky and gross. So big scoops, scrape the bottom, scrape the sides, mix it like cake batter. got some time with this one it's a pot life of 40 minutes so it's not like we have to work super quickly with some resins you have a pot life of about five to ten minutes so you got to stir pretty fast especially if you're going to be putting them into vacuum chambers and things like that because you don't have a whole lot of time before everything starts to cure Oof, we got some great big bubbles in this though Stirring and stirring and stirring. Come on, timer. Again, it's real important to wear gloves when you're doing this because it's messy stuff. It's not great for you, so protecting yourself is critical. It smells kind of nice, though. Kind of baby powderish. Kind of sweet. And the uh, silicone I'm using here is Mold Max 60 from Smooth On. They make a great line of different silicones. This one's designed for high heat applications, so I can use it with pewter, hopefully. Um, hopefully, I can get a good pewter cast from one of these molds. Haven't so far, but we'll see. We'll keep trying. Um, but you can also use them for resins, uh, which tend to be a little easier to work with. They don't instantly seize once they cool and tend to be a little thinner in liquid form. Um, but I'll show some casting and stuff like that one of these days soon. Alexa, stop the timer. All right, that's our timer. I want a smart device like that. I know it's kind of bougie and dorky, but it makes it really nice to be able to do this stuff kind of hands-free when your hands are otherwise completely covered in mixed silicone or other mess paints or glues or whatever all right so just like last time i'm going to pour this into the corner kind of away from my uh actual masters that i'm going to cover so that it flows over it nice and slowly i'm also going to try to let it flow down in a nice thin line try to minimize any bubbles that are coming down with it and just let it sort of self-level This part takes a lot of patience, which I like to think I have, but I've met myself and I know that's not always the case. Nice 
nice and slowly, letting it flow. And then I'm going to kind of pull the flow over closer to the edge to help push the silicone to flow over our model, over the masters. And lots of little bubbles starting to rise to the surface. Again, you really do want to avoid bubbles in this stuff because they will leave permanent uh, bumps or voids uh, where you want your you want the detail from your original to be nice and slow nice and slow I know this is going to be a shorter one and I didn't put up a whole lot of notice uh, for it, but I will probably be doing another stream later tonight after dinner. I want to get some yard work done once it starts cooling off first. Um, and as I said, I'll pretty soon here try to find a way to be able to stream some of the metal casting process. Um, I need to do that outdoors, out in the garage, and I don't have a great Wi-Fi connection out there at the moment, so it makes it a little tough to do live streaming. But we'll see what I can figure out. Come on. Oh, see, I'm catching myself being impatient and pouring it thicker than I want. Make sure it flows all the way to the corners. Completely covering our master. There we go. All right, and now I can be afford to be a little more impatient since all of our masters should be covered. I'm going to go ahead and let the rest of this flow out. Let it self level. Good. And it looks like I've got more than I needed to make the mold, make it nice and thick on this side, which is good. Um, I'm actually going to leave a little bit of the silicone in the cup. I like to do that because that can be my sort of test for how well it's cured. I can, you know, I can feel or try to peel away some of the silicone from the cup before I try to peel away the, the walls from the mold itself. Make sure that we've got a good solid cure before messing with the one that actually matters. Just trying to get a little extra right there, and I think that's going to do it. All right. So, just like that, we're done. Now we just got to wait the 24 hours for this stuff to cure. So this time tomorrow, after work tomorrow, we should be able to separate these and be good to go. I'm going to take the gloves off and shut off the stream. Thanks for hanging out, and I just realized, and you probably caught it on the stream, I just wiped some of this silicone directly onto my pants. Good thing I'm wearing some crappy old shorts that I've had for ages that I don't mind getting stained. Um, thanks for hanging out and watching another episode of Make It So, Adventures in Spacecraft. Uh, I'm your host, Rank and File, and I will see you next time. Uh, see you later. <laughs>